All right. So for the past few days, we've been talking about civil rights. Civil rights are your legal protections against being discriminated or being treated unfairly because of your color, your gender, your sexual orientation. Last time, we focused mainly on racial discrimination. Today, our focus is on gender discrimination, particularly on women. Um, you should know that the root of all these problems is that our founding fathers, when they created the Constitution, all of them were rich white men, and their status in American society was never in doubt. So they never put anything in the US Constitution that protected minorities, that protected women from being discriminated upon by their government. So the root of the problems that women had 200 years ago and still having today is that, that there's nothing in the Constitution originally that protected women's rights. In fact, until very recently, women could not even vote. They had no such thing called suffrage. Suffrage is the right to vote, and women did not have that originally. States did not allow women to be able to vote. That's like half the population not being able to vote in the United States. And without political power, without the ability to vote, government did not listen to women for a very long time. Why should they care about what women want and what women need and how people are treating women if women can't vote? There's this practice across the United States back then called curvature. Once a woman gets married to a man, she loses all of her legal identity to her husband. So here's what that means in practice. If I was a married woman and I have to sign a contract, a legal binding contract, I'm not allowed to do it by myself. I have to um, have my husband sign it for me. If I have property that my parents gave me, for example, land or a house, once I get married to a man, that property gets turned over to him under his name. So in most states, if we get a divorce, that property will remain on uh, the husband's property because it's under his name. So when you get married to somebody back in the 1800s and the early 1900s, you're risking losing property. You're risking losing your legal identity to your husband. But for a lot of people in the United States, that's the way things should be. Women should be subservient to men. That's always what's traditionally been the mindset of, of people back then. So coverture is the practice of legally denying women a separate legal identity from their husbands. So they can't sign their own contracts. They can't make their own agreements. They have to rely on their husbands. They do not exist apart from their husbands, legally anyway. So in the 1800s, we get the rise of the women's rights movement, a bunch of women fighting for equality. But women's rights movement are not going to get a lot of successes, mainly because they don't have any political power. Why should government listen to them if they can't vote? So the number one thing that they aimed for was suffrage. So their main goal was the right to vote. Their main goal was suffrage. They thought if they obtain suffrage, if they get the right to vote, everything else will fall in line. All these discriminatory policies against women are suddenly going to magically disappear once they get the right to vote. That fight to get the right to vote for women is going to last very, very long. African Americans will be free from slavery. African American males will get the right to vote way, way before women will ever be able to cast a ballot in the United States. We talked about the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery and the 15th Amendment that gave African American males the right to vote. Those were added to the US Constitution in the 1860s. Women in this country will not be able to cast a ballot until 1920 with the addition of the 19th Amendment. So 60 years after uh, slavery was abolished, the 19th Amendment will finally be added. This isn't like a long time ago. This is only about like 100 years ago that women were able to cast a ballot in the United States again to get political power. So this granted women's suffrage or the right to vote for women. So the 19th Amendment granted women's suffrage or the right to vote. They thought, Getting the right to vote, being able to participate in American elections will fix all their problems. They were sadly, sadly wrong. Gender discrimination will continue in all walks of life, including in employment. There were jobs that the women could were denied. Traditional male jobs, like being a doctor, being an engineer, these jobs were denied women. Women were relegated to professions that are traditionally for women, like being a teacher or being a nurse. Education. There were a lot of universities back then that did not admit women into their universities. Again, nothing in the Constitution that stops all of this or any of these. There's still discrimination in the military. 
for a long time, women couldn't even be part of the military. And then when they finally let them in, they were limited to some roles, like being crew members on a ship. But they were not allowed to fight with the men in combat. They were not allowed to be on the ground with the men, fighting with the men. It doesn't mean that women didn't die in war. They did, but they didn't die as soldiers on the ground. They died as crew members on a ship. They died as support staff or nurses um, helping out soldiers. And the workplace. There's a lot of sexual discrimination as more women were becoming part of the workplace. There were not a lot of laws back then that protected women from being sexually harassed. If you are a woman and you were working in the 50s and the 60s, you expect to be sexually harassed. That was just a thing back then. That was just a common thing back then. There were no laws protecting you against sexual harassment. And again, your boss taking, like, exerting sexual favors from you in exchange for promotions, in exchange for jobs. Not a lot of protections against sexual harassment. Now, there was a proposed amendment to fix all of this. It's called ERA, or the Equal Rights Amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment would have made all gender discrimination in the United States unconstitutional. So this is a proposed amendment that would have made all gender discrimination, treating women unequally, unfairly, all those problems that we talked about would have been made unconstitutional by adding this amendment. Anybody know which of your 27 amendments, 27 additions to the U.S. Constitution, is the Equal Rights Amendment? Which number is it? Obviously, it's before the 19th Amendment, right? 19th Amendment's when they got the right to vote. What's the Equal Rights Amendment? Which amendment is it? This is a trick question. It's not there. Because in order to add an amendment to the U.S. Constitution, three-fourths of the state governments have to approve. They have to ratify that amendment. So when it came time to approve the, the Equal Rights Amendment, we did not get enough of the states to support this amendment. So it was never added to the U.S. Constitution. So we don't have an ERA today. Other countries do, but we do not have an Equal Rights Amendment. So a lot of the problems that women had back then and women are still having today would have probably been fixed by this addition to the U.S. Constitution, but not enough of the states agreed that this was a good idea. All these purple states approved. Texas, for once, was on the right side of history here, but a lot of the states in the South, very conservative states, very traditional states, they have a traditional view on what women should be and where should women should be, did not approve of this amendment. They tried again in the 70s, the 1970s. It failed again in the 1970s. Women are still trying to get this amendment ratified and added to the U.S. Constitution until today. So the Equal Rights Amendment was proposed, but it was never ratified by enough of the state. It was never approved by enough of the states. Ratified or approved, whatever you want to put on it. All right. In the 1960s, women, alongside African Americans, are going to demand for more equality. We talked about the Civil Rights Act of 1960. When we talked about it and how it benefited African Americans, in any public buildings, you're not allowed to discriminate based on race. But it also helped women by banning gender discrimination in employment. Gender discrimination in employment. So sexist employment practices, like not hiring women for certain jobs, that is now banned today. It would be illegal. It would be a violation of that law. Title IX concerns us here. It still concerns us today. Title IX is a law concerning schools. I told you before, that to help states provide what they're providing, especially in education, the federal government gives them money. What do we call money given by the federal government to the states? Grants. Grants. So, in schools today, if your school program is receiving money from the federal government, you cannot discriminate based on gender. Which of our school programs here at Nicky Row gets money from the federal government? Lunches. Breakfast, they get money from the federal government. Those of you in athletics, they're receiving money from the federal government. Those of you in UIL, or you're in a migrant program, you're receiving money from the federal government. In almost every program that's being provided by Nicky Road today, they're getting money from the federal government, which means in those programs, there can be no gender discrimination. That's why if a, a female wants to try out for the football team, she has to be allowed to do so, otherwise, the school would be violating Title IX. What happens if they violate Title IX? What happens to that money? They pay the school loser. So 
we have to be very careful here at DPRO to make sure that we're not discriminating based on gender because a lot of those programs, we rely a lot for, for the federal government to pay for those programs. So Title IX, ban gender discrimination in all federally funded, federally funded school programs. In any school program that receives money from the federal government, there can't be um, gender discrimination. It also provided against sexual harassment in school. Next, women in the military. You should know that until very recently, look at the year 2015, only a little less than 10 years ago, women and men are not allowed to be on the same unit. Women were not allowed to be in combat with the men. Um, the reasoning for this that a lot of people put out is if men and women are mixed and they're all serving on the ground, fighting on the ground uh, together, the sexual tension that arises between having females and males in the same unit will kind of distract the military from achieving whatever goals it's trying to achieve. Right? You might buy that reasoning or not, but that has been the reasoning for like 100 years why women were forbidden from participating on the ground in direct combat with the men. Until 2015, the Obama administration they changed this policy, so today, if you're a woman and you sign up to the military, you will be allowed to participate in direct combat with the men, risking your life in direct combat. So women were finally allowed to participate in direct combat. But look at when we achieved that, very, very recently, this wasn't like 100 years ago, this was very recent when they changed this policy. Today though, there's one aspect in the military that women um, are still there's still some inequality, and that would be the military draft. So in case World War III starts someday, those of you who are 18 and over, if you're a man, if you're a, female, if you're a male, you have to sign up for the military draft, but if you're female, you're not allowed to, you're not, you don't have to sign up for the draft. Whether or not that's fair or not, that's up to you. All right, sexual harassment, more and more laws were passed to protect women against sexual harassment in the workplace. A lot of you don't know what sexual harassment means. A lot of you think that being sexually harassed in the workplace means somebody has to touch you or somebody has to um, sexually assault you. That's not what sexual harassment means. Sexual harassment means that your working environment becomes so uncomfortable that it's very, very difficult for you to work and function in the workplace. So here's what this means, right? If your coworkers are always making comments about your body, whether positively or negatively, you told them to stop, but they keep doing it, if your coworkers keep catcalling you, if you have somebody in your workplace that keeps asking you out, you told them no and you're uncomfortable Excuse with me, it, can but you they keep doing it. Liana Cardenas. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. She's leaving. Thank you. That could already be sexual harassment. You have grounds to sue that person. So what sexual harassment means is they created a hostile working environment for you. So a hostile working environment. That's what sexual harassment means. Uh, it's very uncomfortable, it's very difficult to show up to work. Again, it doesn't have to be somebody touching you inappropriately. It could be they created an uncomfortable working environment for you. Also, right, your boss, your employers, let's say you work for, Wal uh, for McDonald's, for example, make sure if you get sexually harassed, you tell your boss about it and you document it. Um, because if they don't do anything about it, if they let sexual harassment continue in the workplace, you can also sue them, even if they're not the ones doing the sexual harassment. They're, they're your boss, they're your employer, they should be providing you with a safe work environment, and if they fail to do that, it's their fault, so you can sue them also. Any questions? This doesn't mean today that women and men are equal in all walks of life. Today, the women's rights women are still fighting for something. The number one thing that they're fighting for is something called comparable worth. Comparable worth, which is equal pay for equal work. According to statistics, women are getting paid 75 cents to a dollar, so they're getting paid about 25 cents less than men for the same type of job. So here's what they, uh, they usually do. Um, Let's say a woman and a man are working at a grocery store, right? They're getting paid the same for the same type of work, but instead of calling the, the, the male is going to be a supervisor, and the women, or the female is going to be an assistant supervisor. They do the same thing, but because they call them a different job title, what can they do? They pay them 
less. Paying women and men differently for, for the same job title is illegal. So what employers do is they just call women a different job title and that allows them to pay them a little less, even though they're doing the same thing. Any questions about that? That's the number one thing the women's rights movement are fighting for today. But there are other issues. I need you to write these down somewhere in the margin. It might help you on your exam. Number one issue today, especially after last year, are reproductive rights for women, including abortion. Pregnancy is a big deal for women. It can derail their careers. It can derail their education, right? And a state being able to tell a woman what to do with her body is something that a lot of women are not able to take. Or they're not in agreement with access to contraceptions, contraceptives, also a big deal for women. They believe that the workplace or the government should be providing contraceptions because they do, contraceptions are ways in which women can prevent pregnancy. Another big one today, especially if you watch like the NFL and the NBA, is domestic violence. Women are usually the target, although males can be a target of domestic violence as well, but women are usually the ones who are targeted with domestic violence. And like I told you, there's still some women today that are pushing for an equal rights amendment to fix all these problems that we talked about. Whether or not it's a good idea or not to add an amendment like that, that's going to be up to you guys. Any questions? All right, a couple of things. Those of you that made your poster to make up for the grade, for the discussion grade, make sure you turn those in. I already got some submissions, but if you're one of those people that need to improve your grade, make sure you turn that in. The thing yesterday that we did yesterday, some of you did not turn them in, so if you pass the quiz today and you have some time left over today, you might want to do that and turn that in to make up the grade. It's all online. All right, let's go ahead and take the quiz. Anyone have any questions before we take the quiz? Take your quiz, I'll give you 10 minutes. If you, do, if you really, really need to go, you can't wait. Good luck.